Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about asymmetric unit membrane and pressure-induced endocytosis and exocytosis in the urothelium of your urinary bladder. So before that, please subscribe Medicines Made Easy for Medical Students in YouTube and do visit http medicinesmadeeasy.webado.ie in, in order to get the slides or the notes that I've uploaded in the blog. So before that, I would like to introduce the difference between the outer leaflets and the inner leaflets. Remember, this is the picture of the phospholipid bilayer. So outer leaflets, we are referring to the phospholipid layer that is facing outside the cell, which is facing the extracellular fluid. And the inner leaflets is the leaflet that facing the intracellular fluid. Okay. So before I go into AUM or asymmetrical unit membrane, I'm going to talk about the two different shapes or two different types of vesicle that you can find in the umbrella cells of different organisms. So you have this shape, so with, which is wider, and you have the fusiform vesicle. Fusiform. One is this shape, one is fusiform vesicle. So these are just the different types of vesicles that you can find in different organisms in the urothelians. So this whole thing is showing you the umbrella cells. So umbrella cells, or sometimes you can find these vesicles in the intermediate cells layer. So I'm going to introduce you the plug. So what do we mean by asymmetrical unit membrane? Remember, AUM, asymmetrical unit membrane, we are referring to the plug. Okay, we are referring to the plug. So, as you can see, the outer leaflet, the one that facing the urine, is thicker than the inner leaflet, the one that is facing inward. Okay, so as you can see, this layer is thicker than the inner layer. So, the plug is formed in between the two hinges. So hinge can also be known as the micro plica. That is another name for hinge. So this whole thing is the umbrella cell. It's just a magnific it's just a magnified picture of the umbrella cell. And you can see a this shape. Uh, vesicles. So, uroplugins and plug do not mess up the terms. These two terms are different from each other. Plug, we are referring to the regions which is in between the two hinges. While uroplugin is the constituents of the plug. So, uroplugins is a protein, either it's tetraspan or single span transmembrane protein that will assemble into asymmetric unit membrane. And in one plug or in one region, you will have about 1,000 to 3,000 asymmetric unit membrane particles. And these pictures are the examples of the asymmetric unit particles. And this is uh, collected from the bovine. So as you can see, you have the inner ring with six larger particles and you have outer rings with six smaller particles. Remember, your asymmetric unit membrane is a six-fold symmetric structure. Okay, so then we move on to the classical model and the revised model on the urothelians and how they change when the urine urinary bladder is filled and when urinary bladder is not is empty. So before that, the classical model proposed that the vesicles will undergo exocytosis when there is a when urine is filling into the urinary bladder. So these exocytos vesicles consists of the uroplugins to increase the surface area of the urothelium. So, to increase the apical surface area. 
and accompanied by a change in shape. While during voiding, all the vesicles, all the added membranes will be endocytos. And again, they re-establish, they recycle the vesicles. This is a classical model. So, in fact, in the revised model, there are a big changes to this. So, in the revised model, as you can see, both endocytosis and exocytosis of the vesicles are occurring at the same time during urinary bladder filling. Why? Because you need to turn over. So this is what we know as turn over. We regenerate the new vesicles and we remove the damaged vesicle. This is known as turn over. So remember, during urine filling into the urinary bladder, you will have both exocytosis and endocytosis of the vesicle. But the net effect is there is more exocytosis of vesicles than endocytosis. Okay, so the endocytosis vesicles will be degraded. So why we want to degrade in the lysosome? So this is because we want to reduce the volume and the density of the vesicle. So as you can see, the vesicles that is endocytos is removed by lysosomes. In this case, we can reduce the vesicles that is occupying the space in the cell and therefore we can change the morphology of the cells but this is still not yet understood and we don't have enough evidence for this but remember endocytosis and exocytosis whenever you have the increase in hydrostatic pressure due to the urine that press against the urothelium you will have rapid endocytosis and exocytosis coupled to each other and we know it as turn over okay however during voiding you will have the endocytosis of the added membrane and you have the reform so you have the vesicle formations in the Golgi so this might be the de novo synthesis of the vesicle to re-establish the vesicle population so I want so I wanted to uh, bring you a few important points in this uh, in this diagram remember the adding of the membrane or the removing of the vesicle is occurring gradually all the, over the five hours period during your filling period so during filling period you have two phases you have first phase is the rapid rise of urine however your pressure is consistent so that phase is known as storage phase. And the second phase is the rapid rise in the pressure and therefore is the maturation phase. Okay, so you have storage phase and maturation phase. So storage phase, your urine volume will increase very fast, but the pressures within the urinary bladder is relatively constant because uh, one urinary bladder can... Uh, Accommodate for about 300 mils to 200 mils. I'm not sure. So Okay, let's get back to this. So remember the vesicle populations. They are distinct entities Okay, they are not connected to each other. The vesicles are individually and they are not connected to the cell surface so During the relaxed position that means you don't have uh, during the empty bladder or less you run in the bladder uh, the vesicles are in the scattered position, okay? They are scattered all the way around in the cytoplasm. So when it comes to increase in hydrostatic pressure due to filling, you will have the vesicles that move, aggregate together, uh, it's not aggregate, move closer together underneath the apical plasma membrane. So the third point is that the volume fractions and the numerical density of vesicles is significantly decreased in film and in the voided urothelium. Uh, so this is the um, umbrella cells. Okay, so volume fractions and numerical densities of vesicles significantly decrease in film bladder and then the voided bladder. This means that 
the number of the vesicles remaining in the umbrella cells is lesser than in the body because during filling we want to remove the or we want to digest the vesicles or the damaged vesicles so that it doesn't occupy much space in your umbilical cell okay so we want to flatten the cell so you want to flatten the cell you have to remove the endocytos vesicles rather than just leave it there if you leave it there you will the vesicles will occupy the space in the cytoplasm and therefore uh, you will increase the cell volume so you want to decrease the cell volume so you try to remove the endocytos membrane by digesting it okay so as you can see this is the stage in which you don't have the this is the stage of filled bladder as you can see the endocytos vesicle is digested by the lysosome and there are no or there are less vesicles left in the cytoplasm when compared to this during the voiding stage you will have a lot of uh, vesicles that act as a backup plan okay for exocytosis so you can compare this is what they mean by the volume fractions the number of vesicles divided by the total cell volume so during filling phase you will have a low volume fractions because you have more endocytos vesicles digested by the lysosome so the number of vesicles in the cell cytoplasm is decreased when compared to voiding you are regenerating the uh, vesicles or your endocytos the vesicles and then remain in the cytoplasm or you de novo synthesize from scratch to synthesize new vesicles and you retain the vesicles in the cytoplasm you are basically increase the number of vesicles in the cytoplasm so Next, increased hydrostatic pressure will stimulate about 50% increase in apical surface area and coupled with significant decrease in vesicle area, surface area. So, surface area. So, this statement is similar to the statement above. Okay, so when you have more vesicles in your cytoplasm, you are basically increasing the surface area of the vesicle. So normally, if you have the during the filling phase, or we say increased hydrostatic pressure, you will have 50% increase in your apical surface and you have a decrease in vesicle surface area. Okay, because you remove the vesicles from the membrane, the damaged vesicles from the membrane or in the cytoplasm and is removed by the lysosome. So you decrease the surface area of the vesicle. So remember we are dealing with turnover so whenever you have an increase in hydrostatic pressure during filling phase you will have a rapid increase in endocytosis together with exocytosis so these two things is happen together happen simultaneously just that you have more exocytosis than endocytosis so to give the overall net effect is giving you the added membrane so, so how we induce exocytosis? First, during the filling phase, you will have the neuron, okay, you have to remember, we involve the nervous system in this case too. So, ATP is the ligand. So, during the increase in hydrostatic pressure, so ATP can be released by the uh, cells in the urothelium and or by the presynaptic neuron so ATP is the ligands for the purinergic receptor and purinergic receptors you have many types some are G protein coupled receptor and some are ion channel receptor so when ATP which is the ligand bind to the purinergic receptor changes the conformations of the purinergic receptor in turn stimulate the intracellular signaling so this intracellular signaling eventually will release the calcium ion from the calcium store and calcium ion thereby induce exocytosis of the vesicle 
Okay, so this is an example during hydrostatic pressure. So you can have a afferent nerve, the presynaptic neuron, that release ATP as you can see. Or ATP can be released by any cells in the urothelium, and this ATP will bind to the purinergic receptor, and therefore they causing the release of calcium ion into the cell, either it's from extracellular fluid into the cell or from the cell, or it's from the uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum into the cell. So calcium ion will then induce the movement of the vesicles by exocytosis. Remember, it's not sarcoplasmic reticulum. I'm wrong because sarcoplasmic reticulum is referring to the muscle. This is, not, this is not muscle. This is umbilical cells. Okay? Okay, that's all.